Can you tell me what you and this cute koala have in common? You both like to chillax and constantly snack on something. And you also have similar fingerprints. Okay, it's no surprise that monkeys have those because we're related, but koalas? Turns out, although they were developing somewhere on the other side of evolution from humans, they did get similar traits to us. We even kind of use fingerprints for the same purposes. We need those to grasp, hold, and manipulate things and get a finer perception of the textures and shapes around us. So yes, to grab an Xbox gamepad and win that game. For koalas, who are super picky eaters, the gamepad is replaced with eucalyptus leaves they run through to find the finest of them. You got your fingertips when you were still growing in the womb. They're made up of ridges. Each ridge has pores that are connected to sweat glands under your skin. That's why you leave your fingerprints when you touch glasses, tables, and all other kinds of surfaces. It's all about the sweat. All the ridges form patterns that look like spirals, arches, and loops. Those patterns are even more unique than your DNA. There's a 1 in 64 billion chance that your fingerprint will be exactly like someone else's. Even identical twins don't have the same pattern. So, no long-lost fingerprint twin for you, sorry. That unique pattern stays with you for your entire life. If you happen to damage your fingerprints somehow, or develop some skin condition that can change them, they will still grow back within a month. As you grow older, the skin on your fingertips loses some of its elasticity, and the ridges get thicker. The fingerprints don't change even then, but it becomes harder to scan them or take prints from them. Doing certain jobs can affect the pattern of your fingerprints. If you're a construction worker, especially a bricklayer, or have to wash dishes by hand, you might lose some details in your beautiful natural pattern. Folks who work with certain chemicals also face the same risk. But no worries, once you stop doing those activities, you'll get your fingertips back. So they're unique and never change. Sounds like they were made to prove your identity, right? It looks like the ancient Babylonians were the first ones to appreciate those properties of fingerprints. They pressed them into clay to record business transactions. Starting from the 19th century, Fingerprints have been used to identify criminals. In 1902, fingerprints were used as evidence at the court in England for the first time. A year later, the idea moved on to New York. Now, different types of fingerprint scanners come with many gadgets to make sure they're dealing with the right person. You can unlock your phone, tablet, laptop, USB drive, smart lock, and whatnot with just one touch. This tech itself is extremely accurate, but it depends on many factors. If the scanning goes wrong because the fingers are wet, greasy, too dry or injured, you can't expect to get the correct result. The quality of the scanner also plays its role. It's like with a camera on your phone. You need to have a really good sensor and hardware to get high quality shots. At the user level, it seems like fingerprint ID tech is impeccable. If you save one finger in your phone system, you won't be able to unlock it with another. At a more professional level, errors do happen. Sometimes the system can't identify a registered finger or identifies a finger that's not in the records by mistake. It's rather tricky to fool one of those smart scanners and feed it a fake fingerprint, but it's doable. Shortly after iPhone Touch ID was released, researchers took photos of fingerprints on a glass surface and made molds to fool the scanner. It worked back then, but the progress doesn't stand still. Smartphones now have ultrasound fingerprint scanners, and those are more secure. So in theory, if you decided to recreate your fingerprints for some reason, one possible way would be to make a mold. You can use modeling clay or the same gelatin that gummy bears are made of. It has similar conductivity as your finger. Another simple solution is to put your fingertip on a piece of sticky tape and use the image you get to deceive a scanner. That, or take a photo of a fingerprint on a glass surface, then take it to a 3D printer, calibrate it, and print it. There is also a more elaborate method the bad guys could theoretically use to steal someone's identity or unlock a gadget. If you ever left your fingerprints somewhere, you can't be 100% sure they're safe in a database. You can even find some scanned fingerprints available online. The next step would be to turn the image into a 3D model and print it on a 3D printer. Researchers tried doing it, but the polymer those printers used was too hard, so scanners didn't recognize it as a human finger. They found another solution and printed a cast to make a prosthetic finger from the right material. I guess we can all be happy, it sounds like a lot of work. So not so many bad guys would go that far. Sometimes even a photo is enough to recreate someone's fingerprint pattern. 
Japan's National Institute of Informatics ran a test and found that flashing a peace sign in photos can lead to your personal data leakage. If your fingerprints are in focus and the lighting is good, the pattern can be read and copied, even if the photographer is nine feet away from you. So if someone does get access to your fingerprints, how could they use them against you? Well, the problem here is that you can change a password or even buy a new gadget, but a fingerprint is something that stays with you forever and can't be changed. So the bad guys get permanent access to your identity this way. They could use it to unlock your gadgets to do online banking and get access to your digital wallet, email, medical identity, and other sensitive data. They could shop online on your behalf or access the building where you work. The good news is that it's really tricky to put that mean puzzle together. Criminals would most likely need more than just a photo or a mold of your fingerprints to use it against you. If you still think your fingerprint is worth showing to everyone, you can order custom-made jewelry with it. Those designs are becoming more and more popular. Makes sense. You can be sure your pendant will be one of a kind, or at least one in 64 billion. In case you're having doubts about the safety of fingerprint ID, you might like an alternative to it, the microbiome. It's the genetic material of all the bacteria and other microorganisms living inside you. It looks like the microbiome stays the same for a long period of time, and you can identify people by it among populations of hundreds. Well, stealing that ID would sure not be easy. Your tongue also has its unique pattern of tiny bumps and ridges. That pattern hardly changes over time because the tongue sits safely inside your mouth. Your lips, too, have a unique print of elevations and depressions. It would be really romantic to unlock a phone with a kiss, right? Or identify criminals this way. The only problem is that they rarely smooch the crime scenes. Then, there are also your toe prints. Those also form their unique pattern when you're still in the fetus position. There was even one case when a burglar got identified by a mark he left on the floor. He broke into a bakery in Scotland, so the flour was all over the place. The jury convicted the suspect within a short 15 minutes. You probably never thought it was that special, but your ear could also compete in the race for the most unique body part. Do you feel all those curves and the ridges at the rim of your ear? No one else in the world has an exactly identical set. Unlocking your phone with an ear scan seems logical. Let's see if it happens. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.